ashver.com Hello, welcome to ashver.com. You are watching interesting video on why do I have urinary bladder retention after general anesthesia. Please read the disclaimer carefully. In recovery rooms all over the country. You can't go home until you pee. While this seems like a simple condition to meet, many people have bladder retention after general anesthesia. This frustrating situation is called poor, post-operative urinary retention and usually resolves with minor interventions, but can cause over-distended bladders and may lead to urinary tract infections and hospital admissions in some cases. Bladder retention is a common side effect of general anesthesia. Over the past several decades, general anesthesia has become increasingly safe. The rate of complications has dropped and the occurrence of serious adverse events after anesthetics has become progressively more rare. General anesthesia anesthesia, where you are completely unconscious for surgery, requires the use of drugs that change how your body works. It's no surprise, then, that there are still some side effects after an anesthetic. Bladder retention after general anesthesia remains one of the most common side effects. The true incidence is hard to pinpoint because of differences in criteria for defining postoperative urinary retention, but it seems that it can be a problem for a significant number of people. Minor issues with delayed bladder emptying occur in up to 70% of patients in immediate post-op period. More significant bladder retention problems can affect 1 to 20% of people after general anesthesia. The discrepancy in the numbers occurs because of differences in criteria used to diagnose poor. For example, some studies use a volume of retained urine measured by ultrasound or a certain time period of inability to urinate as a reason to make the diagnosis. Others only diagnose poor if a catheter must be inserted to drain the over bladder structure and function. As usual, to understand abnormal bladder function, we must first briefly review normal bladder function. The bladder emptying reflex is fairly complex. The bladder, itself, is composed of a body and a neck. Different types of muscle fibers and nasal fibers and nerves in and around the bladder interact to allow the function of micturition-passage of urine. Emptying the bladder requires input and action from the bladder, surrounding muscles, spinal cord, brainstem and brain. The body of the bladder is the sac that holds the urine. There are stretch receptors in the walls of the bladder body that indicate the level of fullness of the bladder. These special sensors send signals to the brain when the bladder should be emptied. The neck of the bladder has sphincters or valves that open to allow urine to be expelled. The internal urethral sphincter, located inside the neck of the blood bladder, is made of smooth muscle fibers and is not under voluntary control. The external urethral sphincter is a ring formed by the pelvic floor muscles, striated muscle, and is under voluntary control. Control of bladder emptying has both voluntary and involuntary components, then. Inner reflex pathways control urination under the regulation of higher centers in the brain. The brainstem contains a storage center and a micturation center, pontine storage center and pontine micturation center, that feed information to the spinal pathways that send nerves to the bladder. When the, when the bladder needs to be emptied, the body of the bladder contracts, and the internal sphincter relaxes due to input from the parasympathetic nervous system, part of the involuntary nervous system. Your brain tells the muscles of the external sphincter to relax, the voluntary part of the process, and the urine is able. General anesthesia and bladder function. The important thing about all of that anatomy and physiology, summarized in the above video, is to understand that there are many points along the pathway that could interrupt normal bladder emptying. General anesthesia during which you are unconscious, affects brain function function and inhibits the autonomic, involuntary, nervous system that controls bladder emptying. The brain centers in charge of urination are inhibited. The end result is that the detrusor, bladder muscle, contractions are suppressed or decreased. 
This is an effect of both the four anesthetic agents and the, the anesthesia gases used during general anesthesia. Potential complications related to poor. More than just an annoyance, bladder retention after general anesthesia can lead to some significant consequences. Prolonged retention of urine has been linked to urinary tract infections. An overfull bladder is more likely to be incompletely emptied, which did which is a risk factor for infection. Also, if a catheter has to be used to relieve the retention, this increases the risk of infection, as well. Longer-term issues with bladder emptying is another risk. There is some evidence that having an over-distended bladder can cause difficulty in emptying the bladder after leaving the hospital. A stretched bladder signals the nerves of the parasympathetic nervous system. Other organs with parasympathetic nerves can be affected by this stimulation. As a result, a slowed or irregular heartbeat, low or high blood pressure and nausea, vomiting are consequences of this effect. These can occasionally be dangerous. Cardiac arrest is an unlikely, but possible, result of post-op urinary ret- Thank you for watching this video. This channel offers motivational, inspirational, valuable and informative videos to soothe, cleanse and inspire your health, mind, body and spirit. You can find lot of interesting videos on wide range of topics here, stay tuned and keep watching.